Thank you. 
Hello, welcome to worship at University Christian Church in Fort Worth, Texas. My name is Russ Peterman, and I am the senior minister here, and it is my deep joy and my great privilege to welcome you to worship, whether this is your first time with us, whether you're a longtime member, whether you've been a part of this community of faith your entire life. We are so glad that you've chosen to join us today for worship. I want to invite you, before we get started, to go to our website. There you will find just below this window uh, four tabs, one that will allow you to register your attendance and let us know that you join us, uh, whether it's on Sunday morning or throughout the week. Uh, you will also find a place to let us know of any prayer concerns that you may have, as well as download the worship bulletin for this service. And then finally, you will find a Give tab that will allow you to share your offerings. We are uh, concluding this morning a, a series that we are calling Holy Chaos, Creating Connections in Divisive Times. It's based on this book by Amanda Henderson. Amanda is a disciples minister uh, serving in Colorado Springs, Colorado. She's a graduate of Bright Divinity School just across the street, and she will be joining us today. I'm excited for you to hear from her. She will be offering and leading us in the prayers of the people. Church, it is so good in these divisive times when we are being asked to socially distance for us to come together for spiritual nearness. And so church, let us worship God together.
now this call to worship. Behold how good and pleasant it is for us to dwell in unity. When the world divides us, come Holy Spirit, make us one. We worship God with songs of unity and praise. Let us worship God together. Good morning, University Christian Church. Thank you for inviting me to be with you in prayer this morning. Will you pray with me? Creator God, your ever-present love and grace is overwhelming. 
And God, we need that overwhelming love and grace in these days. The world feels so heavy as we face a pandemic and isolation and economic struggle, as the political divides pull us apart and leave us feeling anxious. In the midst of this chaos, we need you, God, and we need each other. In the midst of this chaos, it is through you and through each other that we feel your presence because we know that you do not forsake us. We know from our experience that you make yourself known again and again. You are the one who brings rain in the drought, food to the hungry, comfort to the grieving, joy to the struggling. God, we ask that you fill us in these days with your life and your resilience. We ask that you grant us wisdom and patience and vision and courage as we move together through these days. Moving together, we pray together in the way that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we are wrapping up a series today that we've been calling Holy Chaos, Creating Connections in Divisive Times. And over the last several weeks, we've been looking at ways in which we can, in the midst of these incredibly divisive, chaotic times that we find ourselves in, how we can come together and partner with God to, to heal the world. We've talked about what it means to, to see beyond our fears the fears that oftentimes wreak havoc and hold us, paralyze us, keep us from living the life that God has entrusted us to live, the life that God dreams for us to live. We've talked about knowing when it is important to let go and when it is time to hold on. And last week we talked about the importance of embracing life with a spirit of creativity and curiosity, both in our relationships that we can seek to understand even more so than to be understood. This week we're going to talk about what it means for us to, to be reminded from time to time that we are all in this together, that we belong to one another, that, that our most desperate needs in life lie in this sense of belonging, this sense of connection with each other. The text that you're about to hear is from John's Gospel. It's late in the story the night Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, Jesus knew that this was probably going to be the last time that he would ever be with them. And so he wanted to leave them with one last lesson on self-sacrifice of utter love and service. And so this one that they had been following, the one that they adored, that they worshipped, that they trusted, that they loved, he did something extraordinary. He went to each one, he got down on his knees, and he washed their feet. After he had washed their feet, put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? For I have set an example that you also should do as I have done to you. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. 
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple. If you have love one for another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A while back, I attended a conference in which the keynote speaker was Alan Hilton. Alan is a minister in the United Church of Christ, and he's written a book called A House United, How the Church Can Help Save the World. In this book, he suggests that we are living right now in not the United States of America, but what he refers to as the divided states of America. That we are more divided as a nation at this time than at any other time since the Civil War. It was during the Civil War in 1858, June, when Abraham Lincoln gave a speech to the Republican Party in Illinois that would go on to become famous. And in that speech, he said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Now, of course, those words were not original to Abraham Lincoln. He was quoting Jesus, who offered that same prophetic warning over 1,800 years before. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Perhaps we need to hear that once again because we as a nation are divided. And there are all sorts of statistics and figures that I can give you to, to describe and, and articulate that deepening divide, but you don't need that. You know it. You see it. You, you feel it. How we have become so divided and polarized. The bottom line is that, that when it comes right down to it, that families have split. Relationships, friendships have ended. Gone are the days of Lincoln's team of rivals where people with differing opinions would come together, would work together for the good of the country. Or even the days when Republican President Ronald Reagan would reach across the aisle and work with Democratic Congressman Tip O'Neill. In this current divide, though, it seems that compromise is almost impossible. That the political aisle keeps getting wider and wider and wider. And sadly, as the honored chambers of the U.S. Congress looks every day more like a middle school lunchroom, that the people that Congress governs seem to follow suit that we have lost the ability as a nation to even have civil conversations anymore. Everything just feels like a battle. It was Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta, as she's now known. She once said, today, if we have no peace, it's because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. That man, that woman, that child is my brother, my sister, that if everyone could see the image of God in their neighbor, do you think that we would still need tanks and generals? As I dis discussed last week, it is people that are not like us that oftentimes allow us to grow the most. The problem, though, with Google filters and algorithms, with Facebook friends, with with, with watching the news by narrow casting instead of broadcasting. It means all too often that we surround ourselves with people that are just like us. People whose views, whose opinions, even whose prejudices are just like our own. Cass Sunstein of Harvard has shown that if we surround ourselves only with people with the same views as us, that we become only more entrenched and only more extreme. What we are lacking, what we so desperately need in this time, are connections, encounters with people that are different than us, so that we can learn that we can still strongly disagree and still be friends, that we can still work together. It is in those connections, in those encounters, where we discover that those people that are not like us are people just like us. 
that whenever we reach out, whenever we make a connection with, with someone whose color or class or creed is different than our own, that in that moment we help repair the world, we heal some of those fractures that we find ourselves in. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs is a British rabbi, philosopher, theologian, author. And he suggests that, that the easiest way to look at an age, to, to get into that age, is to, is to ask, what do they worship? Throughout history, everyone has worshipped many things. Some have worshipped the sun, some the stars. Some have worshipped many gods, some one god, some none. But I would ask you, as you look at our world today, what do we worship? Rabbi Sachs suggests that future anthropologists will look at the books that we read, the books on self-help, self-realization, self-esteem, that they will look at the way in which we look at morality as, as being true to oneself, that we will talk about politics as a matter of individual rights and liberties. And that they'll look at this new religious ritual that we have created. You know which one I'm talking about. Selfie. And what they will, what they will conclude is that in this time, that what we worship is the self, me, the I. And I think sadly he's right. That all too often that is true, that we are living in, as Amanda suggests in her book, a toxic culture of individualism. There is so much emphasis in our culture these days on on personal freedoms, on on self-interest, on self-expression. That the idea that life is an individual journey towards personal fulfillment. You do you, we say. Let me give you an example of this. This summer, as the coronavirus was spreading rapidly, uh, spiraling out of control, the suggestion was no. Regulations were passed that required us to wear masks as we go out in public. This was based on the recommendation of scientists and public health experts. But suddenly, suddenly it became politicized. It was an affront to our personal freedoms and liberties. It was around that time that I came across a tweet. I don't remember who said it, but it simply said, Hey, America, your selfishness is showing. Around that time, too, there was a piece by Paul Krugman in the New York Times calling out what he refers to as America's cult of selfishness that believes that that far too many of us have become enraged by any suggestion that our actions should take other people's welfare into account. You see, wearing a mask is not just something that we do to protect ourselves. It's one of the ways that we show care and concern for other people. One of the ways that we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. You see, sometimes we forget that we are biological creatures, that we are social animals, that we have spent most of our evolutionary history in groups with other people, that we need those those interactions, those face-to-face interactions, because it's there where we learn, as Rabbi Sachs says, the choreography of altruism. It's in those connections that we create friendships where we discover things like trust and loyalty, love. But when we have too much of the I or the me and not enough of the we, that we find ourselves vulnerable and fearful and alone. It was no accident that Sherry, Sherry Turkle of MIT called her book on the effect of social media alone together. Rabbi Sachs says that the best way to safeguard, to to strengthen the future of you is to strengthen the future us. 
You see, as people of faith, we know that, don't we? That we have been called, we have been, been reminded that we are called to, to care for the little and the lost and the least, that we are to, to speak out for the people that are on the underside of power, that have been pushed to the margins. We are to speak out for those who have no voice, to offer those that have been downtrodden not just a hand out but a help up. By this, Jesus says, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you just love one another. Look, I know that loving each other is hard work and that the drama and the pain of the world can sometimes feel overwhelmingly intense. But we become, we become whole when we remember that we belong to each other that we are all in this together, that my well-being is closely connected to your well-being and your well-being to mine for better or worse. As Amanda says in her book, that we are called to show up with love every day and simply ask, what does love look like here, now, today? She goes on to say, I have come to believe that love is all about finding peace in the midst of chaos finding connections in the midst of divisions, experiencing healing between the breaths of exhaustion and suffering, and working for ways of loving both personally and systemically in the midst of the overwhelming fear and anger and division that swirls all around us. See, when we move from politics of me to the politics of we, Together, we discover, we discover those beautiful counterintuitive truths that a nation becomes strong when it cares for the weak, that a nation becomes rich when it cares for the poor, that a, that a nation becomes invulnerable when it cares for those that are most vulnerable. That that is what makes a great nation So for the sake of future you, let us strengthen us. For we belong to each other. Just as I have loved you, Jesus said, so you should also love one another. Because by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Amen.
Christians have been sharing the peace with one another since the very beginning. Jesus often greeted his disciples, saying, Peace be with you. And the Apostle Paul began his letters writing, Grace and peace be with you. This simple gesture has profound meaning. As we share the peace with one another, we're connecting with Jesus the Christ, who reconciled heaven and earth through his sacrifice on the cross, bringing peace to the world. So let's share that peace with one another today. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Hi, I'm Case Wormink. And I'm Jake Wormink. And we're members of UCC Youth. So recently, we decided we want to help our community. And we went about this by making hot sauce and then selling it. And we put all the proceeds towards the Presbyterian Night Shelter. So first we grew some peppers and also bought some other ones. And then we made, we came up with three kinds of sauces. Our fire, peach, and smoke flavors. And then we bottled them and sold them. We decided to do this because we noticed that there is a very big hit to the homeless community during COVID. And the Presbyterian Night Shelter supplies many homeless families and homeless people in general with meals and places to stay. Um, this impacted our community because we decided to give some money and hopefully resources to the Presbyterian Night Shelter. Case and Jake embody one of my favorite quotes from Frederick Buechner. Buechner says, The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. You see, God created each and every one of us uniquely, creatively, with gifts and talents and skills to be a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world, to carry Christ's courageous love back out into the world, to create healing and wholeness. Jake and Case have found a unique, creative, beautiful, inspiring way to give back to the community, to meet needs that they see in times of a pandemic. My question for you is, where is your deep gladness? And where do you see the world craving nourishment. If you think about that, you'll find creative ways to meet the needs that we see every single day in Fort Worth and the surrounding areas and beyond. University Christian Church has always been committed to caring for the people around us. And in these times, we are asked by God to use every ounce of creativity and compassion to meet the needs that we see. Our scripture today reminds us that Jesus made a new covenant for us to love one another just as he loves each of us. It reminds me of a time more than 10 years ago when my youngest child was maybe two, close to three, and we worshiped together in a very casual atmosphere where at the end of each worship service, we walked forward and we received communion by intinction. So from the time that she was an infant and I carried her on my hip to her ability to toddle up with me, she would walk with me as I participated in taking the bread in the cup. On one particular Sunday evening, she stopped me and she said, I want to do that. And I wasn't sure what to do. So I got down and I looked her in the face and I asked the best question I could in that moment. I said, what is that? And in wisdom that a child has that grown-ups lose somewhere along the way about the divine, 
she said, it's love. We took communion for the first time together on that day. This is a table of love. This is a table where we all gather to experience Christ's love. Christ's love that is here, Christ's love that is in us, and Christ's love that is working in the world. When we take part in this meal, this simple bread and cup, we are filled with Christ's love so that we can go into the world knowing that we are loved and we can share that love with all. We remember on the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples, he took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. And he said to them, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And when you do so, remember me. In the same way, he took the cup. He blessed it and poured it out for them saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for each of you. Take and drink, and when you do so, remember me. Let us pray. Be with us, dear Lord, as we learn to follow your examples and be like you. Help us to remember that in our partnership with you, that we can become a strong branch to produce fruit and not just leaves. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, help us keep our eyes on you as our source of nourishment and encouragement as we walk this journey side by side with you. Amen. Together we take the bread of life. And the cup of blessing for all. Good morning. I'm Stacy McCoy, the member engagement coordinator here at University Christian Church. And this morning, I'm pleased to announce nine wonderful new members. And I'm so grateful that even though we're apart, we still are able to connect with each other and remind each other that this is not about membership. It's about discipleship. It's about walking with one another, growing with one another on our faith journey. And these people have agreed to do that with us. So please meet Allison and Joel Barlow, Tammy Fryer, the Keith family, that's Laura and Gerald, and their adult children, Samuel and Hannah, and please welcome Susan and Tom White. I know we'll all look forward to greeting them in person as soon as possible. Speaking of continuing to connect, I want to remind you that our lawn chair church ministry starts next Sunday, November the 1st. We have about 11 lawn hosts all around Fort Worth and in Arlington and in Hearst. And we will meet on the lawn in smaller groups for prayer, devotion, and connection. That will be at five o'clock on the first four Sundays of November. So I sure hope you'll go online to our website and register to join us for this unique event. This is just one more way for us to strive to meet the mission at UCC of seeking the sacred, committing to love, and empowering to serve. I'll see you next time. Again, we want to thank you for joining us. And now let us go out into the world, transform the world by living out Christ's courageous love. And as we go, may God bless us and keep us. May God's face continue to shine upon us. And give us peace in these chaotic, divisive times. Amen. <laughs>